Let's talk about irony. G'day to all you lovely people and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kathy and today we are here to talk about this. Turncoat, book 11 in the Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. Mm -mm. The title I think is a dead giveaway what this book is about. So many things, so many thoughts I have about this book. Good and bad, I will admit it. Just like the last few reviews, this one will be split into three. Without spoilers, with spoilers and a summary at the end. And timestamps will be in my description box below for anyone who wants to skip ahead. This book is all about identifying who is the traitor in the White Council. Yeah, and the way it starts, and I don't think this can be considered a spoiler because again, it happens on the very first page. Morgan, Warden Morgan, who in the very first book seems so keen to kill Harry, knocks on his door, bleeding, severely injured, and asks Harry to hide him because the wardens are coming. <laughs> How much did I love that? <laughs> what a turnaround. This is the man who was always so overzealous in his duties always seemed to just have one view of the world. The White Council was always right. <laughs> yeah, that's how I see it. How ironic that he went to Harry for help. <laughs> Seriously, after what he put Harry through. And I think it speaks to Harry's character that he didn't turn him away. Harry knows exactly what it's like to be under suspicion by the White Council. He knows how zealous and inflexible they are. Morgan went to Harry because he has been accused of killing a member of the Senior Council in the White Council. It gets confusing all these councils, right? It was a character we have met before who was never a fan of Harry's anyway. Apparently Morgan was found standing over the dead body with a knife in his hands. I think it was a knife. Naturally, most of the book involves Harry's investigation into what actually happened. Did Morgan commit this or did someone else? Morgan has no recollection of what happened. Or so he tells Harry. And because the wardens are looking for Morgan, Harry agrees to hide him in his apartment, his tiny little apartment. Given how much power the White Council has, how integral they are to Harry's life, how important a group it is in the books, I really enjoyed finally getting to know some of the members on the Senior Council better. Characters like Listens to Wind, I don't think we even saw much of him in previous books or the gatekeeper or ancient may we also see lara of the white court and i'll get into how she's involved at some point and we also see billy and georgina part of the wolf pack i had actually missed seeing them because i always felt that they are part of harry's inner circle and yet they haven't really appeared, I think, in the last few books. So it was good to have them play a larger part in this book. We also meet a new monster as such, a shapeshifter, who seems quite powerful, actually, as they always do when we first encounter him in a book. As part of Harry's investigation, he spends a bit of time in Edinburgh, in the stronghold, I guess, of the White Council. We get to see this stronghold in detail, as well as many of the occupants. But of course, Harry has to tread very carefully because if he is found to be harboring Morgan, he may suffer the same fate that Morgan will, which is execution. <laughs> I love that Harry calls him the ostentatiatory. <laughs> I thought that was so clever and so Perfect, a name. And during Harry's time in Edinburgh, 
we actually learn a lot more about the political forces that shape the White Council, that affect the White Council. Apparently the senior member of the council that was killed was a supporter or advocate for countries that didn't have as much clout as say Western countries. And some members of the White Council feared that the murder was politically motivated. It was to get rid of their support in the senior council. I'm not sure if this is a spoiler or not, but we learn, I think fairly early on, that the council may not care all that much about whether Morgan committed this crime or not, but rather what the political ramifications are. I found that very hard to swallow. <laughs> I'll confess. I know that this is how politics works. I know that this is how groups stay in power. Political parties are a prime example. However, it doesn't mean we have to like it, right? And I certainly did not like it. My innate sense of justice just said, no, if he's innocent, he should not be sacrificed. And yet it seems that members on the senior council who I thought were fair and just don't really care. And there was a lot of talk in this book about the laws of magic and that justice and fairness has nothing to do with them. Okay. <laughs> if you sacrifice what is just because it is politically expedient, it's still wrong on so many levels, if you ask me. I don't think that should be even a consideration. It should not come down to what is politically expedient. It should come down to, is this the right thing to do or not? I think any group, whether it's the White Council, a political party or anything, has to have some moral sense, some moral principles that they abide by. And if they don't, then it all comes down to them just wanting to retain power. I know I went on a tangent there, but I'm a little frustrated with the political parties in Australia. I have been for quite a long time and I think the White Council reflects that. Not unexpectedly, I did not accept their political reasons for wanting to sacrifice someone who might have been innocent. I once again decided this council has to go. <laughs> yeah, it really, really does. It is so much guided by political factions, self-interest, and not for the good of the whole. I cannot believe that the White Council was invented for what it has now become, in this book anyway. They are an elitist group too, which offends me. If you don't have enough power as a wizard, well then you can't be a member of the White Council. <laughs> yeah, and yet my recollection is that they still feel they have the right to get involved with non-members. The hypocrisy of this group, yeah, it really needs to change dramatically. I'm starting to wonder if Harry is going to be instrumental in that. I really hope he is. He also is the one who set up the Paranet, something that was necessary, something the White Council should have done. I know, I know, I keep straying from the point, but I get very worked up over the Council. Now I'm going to talk about things that I liked and things I didn't like. And I'm going to start off with those I didn't like. The Trader. Hmm. I was so disappointed. That is all I can say in this section of the video. But I felt that that was a major cop out. I can't tell you why. <laughs> I really can't. But that for me was a major, major misstep. I thought by Butcher. He hasn't done many in this series of books and I've read 13 so far. I'm very curious to see if other people felt that way. I've said it already, 
the arguments as to why Morgan should be sacrificed, whether or not he was guilty, did not hold water for me. And that isn't a criticism as such of Butcher. This is how he has decided to set up this white council. But I thought their arguments were weak and unconvincing. This shapeshifter character, I don't know how necessary he was to the story. He was something new, yes, but I didn't feel it was necessary. There was enough going on with the politics, with the investigation, with the White Court, with members on the council, that I honestly felt that creature could have been left out and it would have been enough for me. But perhaps it was necessary for another part of the plot, which involved the White Council and Thomas, and that's all I'm going to say. So now let's talk about what I did like about this book. Mm. I really loved seeing the White Council in action, up close and personal, getting to know some of these members on the Senior Council better. I also really liked seeing how Molly has developed, which she has. She is slowly growing into her power, maturing also as a person. I love how protective she is of Harry. And the frozen tableaus, <laughs> when he finds everyone at each other's throats. Oh, that was hysterical. I thought they were really funny, actually. <laughs> and also, I guess, not unexpected given the characters involved and mouse oh my god mouse i love this dog so much wow i hope nothing ever happens to him because i will be bawling my eyes out but mouse just killed it for me in this book the way he <laughs> just sat on top of people to stop them doing something stupid or 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 even better was Mouse faking that he was injured. <laughs> oh my God, that was so funny. I could not stop laughing. I love this dog so much. I've said it before, Mouse is a character in this series, definitely. And he is one of my favorites. No surprise there. There are a few other things I just love so much. The way Harry, dealt with the council, especially towards the end. Oh, wow. I love how brave he is, unflinching and uncompromising when he has to be. <laughs> his defiance, his rebelliousness is just what makes him this great character. And I loved the final battle on the island. That was so well done so well written butcher just misdirected us so often that i didn't know where i was i didn't know who was a traitor that was fantastic something else i really enjoyed about this book is that over the course of 11 books we have seen harry dreston grow as a wizard become more powerful seeing harry in comparison to some of the senior council members, made it very clear just how much more powerful they are. And that eventually Harry should reach that point. I already think he's extremely powerful, but it was another aspect I hadn't considered. And watching, for example, Listens to Wind and seeing the kind of abilities he has, mind blowing. It just shows us the potential of what Harry can become in the future. Okay, I think that is as much as I can say. So let's jump into the spoilers. <laughs> I mentioned that I really disliked who the traitor was. It was really hard for me to decide during most of the book who the traitor might have been. And yet after the battle on the island, it became clear that it could only be the Merlin, or I thought Peabody. And I remember thinking that it can't be Peabody. We just met him in this book. It would be such a massive letdown to me if he was the traitor. And in the end, he was. So 
I was extremely disappointed with that. I thought it was a cop-out. It should have then been the Merlin, or it should have been a character that we have met previously. Someone that we could build up to and suspect, rather than someone that is just thrown into this book at the last minute, it seemed, who is going to be our fall guy. I also didn't find it believable that this character, who we don't know much about, was able to mind wipe, mind influence so many of the wardens, given that these are wizards who are so intent against mind control of any type. He just seems so dull as a character. And yet in the end, it was like we're watching someone else. I know that's because he's meant to be our traitor, but not yeah, not good enough. It was a big letdown for me. And really, it destroyed a lot of my enjoyment of the rest of the book. Now, Lucio. Harry and Lucio had started a relationship, and yet throughout the course of this book, they broke up. For Harry to find out that it was most likely the mind tampering that led them to having a relationship, ah, oh, yeah. That was hard. <laughs> hard for me to see the impact it had on Harry, who has always been such a lonely character. He never seems to have any luck with romances, does he? <laughs> Definitely not. I wanted to talk about Molly and Morgan. I'll start off with Molly. Not surprisingly, she wanted to defend Harry against Morgan. She knows he was the one who basically made Harry's life a misery for quite a few years. So it was not surprising she was antagonistic towards Morgan. And that the two of them constantly got into these arguments where Mouse had to intervene. I liked that Molly is real. She made mistakes. She made some serious mistakes in this book. She tried to delve into both Lucio's and Morgan's minds. It was an indication that this character is still developing, that she still hasn't quite grasped, that even that is unacceptable. And I love how Harry deals with her, how he isn't intent on judging her, but showing her a better way. They have a great relationship and I'm so enjoying seeing it develop. It seems very realistic to me. It seems very honest relationship. Harry is tough when he needs to be, but he also has a huge amount of affection for her. Does Molly feel more for Harry? I suspect she does, but Regardless of whether they end up in a romantic relationship, I think they have a much stronger bond. You would, actually. He has taught her so much, but she has also taught him. She has helped him develop his skills as a wizard. And it's interesting to see Harry also develop and realize that, wow, I can do this better because I've shown it to Molly and I realized that there is a better way of doing it. Morgan, mm, we all know how hard-lined Morgan is, how unforgiving he is of any, even the smallest mistakes. However, even though Morgan is not an easy person to like, I don't think he was meant to be liked. To me, he has always been a zealot far too inflexible. Though I did feel for him when it became apparent he had feelings for Lucio, who had never encouraged that in him, and yet she had a romantic relationship with Harry. That made him more human, I guess. It also explained in part why he was so cold and closed off, which he definitely was throughout the series. But I loved the ending where he said something to Harry to the effect that I came to you because I know you would understand what it is like to be accused when you're innocent. And I thought, wow, it took him a long time to make that acknowledgement, but it was a really beautiful moment, I felt. 
We can all make mistakes, but if we can acknowledge them, that shows some growth in us, doesn't it? And that showed to me that Morgan had grown as a character throughout this series. I actually was a little sad that he died at the end. I thought that he deserved better after so many years of loyalty to the council. He deserved so much better. And how convenient that the council now has their full guy. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that bothered me so much. It was to be expected though. I have to talk about Thomas being taken by the skinwalker. Mm. I suspect that Butcher included the skinwalker shapeshifter so that he could also involve the white court. And perhaps that storyline with the skinwalker was so that we could see a change in Thomas's character, who I will confess in the last few books has become a bit boring. <laughs> yeah, Lara, I love Lara. She's definitely becoming one of my favorite characters in this series of books. Though I have to remind myself that she's a vampire who doesn't have any real kind of feelings, doesn't matter. I still find her really fascinating and interesting because she's powerful, she is strong-minded, she is lethal and definitely very manipulative. I really liked the battle between the skinwalker and listens like wind. Oh, I loved that. Just something else we haven't seen before, shape-shifting by actual wizards. As I said, it really illustrated how much more Harry is going to grow as a character, as a wizard in the future. I also loved that <laughs> he tapped into the power of the island, not knowing what the hell he was doing. <laughs> or so the gatekeeper told him. Speaking of, I'm sure that many like me were misdirected in thinking, oh, the gatekeeper is the traitor, <laughs> but he wasn't. I like misdirections. It makes a book more interesting. It keeps you guessing. You're constantly speculating. Who is it? Who is the traitor? The Merlin. The Merlin and Harry. <laughs> Harry is an insolent bastard. <laughs> Irreverent. I like that about him. Sure, a lot of people would be intimidated by facing up to someone who has a lot more power than they do. But I think it shows more strength of character to stand up to bullies who are bigger and stronger than you. And in a lot of ways, the Merlin is a bully. He just wants his way. Yes, he's unhappy about Morgan being accused of murder, but I think he's more intent on keeping his own position of authority. Morgan was just a pawn. I'm sure he can find more. I did like the confrontation between them in the cafeteria, I think it was. But what I loved the most, oh wow, <laughs> that message he sent to the council. Oh, I just loved it. That was throwing down the gauntlet, wasn't it? <laughs> Again, so in line with his character. Despite everything, despite being a warden, despite respecting the White Council, particularly some of the members, he recognises the flaws in this White Council. I think it was in this book that we learned that his mother, Morgan Le Fay, actually had similar views, that justice should be a part of the White Council's decisions. And then we come to the very end where Harry and Ebenezer talk about setting up a great council to fight the Black Council, particularly since the White Council is burying its head in the sand and refusing to even acknowledge the existence of a Black Council. Perhaps that is what is going to become of the White Council in the future. It will change into something like a great council 
who hopefully will be able to see the morally gray areas, which the White Council seems incapable of doing. I'm sure I've left some things out, but there's only so much I can say in these videos. Okay, so in summary, do I recommend Turncoat? Of course I do. <laughs> you seriously cannot exclude any books. Not if you want to have some continuity. As for a score, hmm, I did not enjoy this one as much as the last book. Definitely. And I've been thinking what to score it. I'm actually going to reduce it a little because I felt that who the trader was, let down the book. So I'm going to give this six. Six out of 10. I'm sure people won't agree and that's okay. We don't always have to agree, but you know, I would love to hear your opinions and you can put them down in the comments or you can contact me on Instagram. Thank you also very much for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. And I really appreciate that you take the time to comment. And if you like this video, you can do the usual. You can like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you all have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.